podcast summary of failure to communicate. How conversations go wrong and what you can do to write them. By Holly Weeks. Tough conversations. Jack invited Mike, his good friend, to work for his family business. Mike threw himself into his job, streamlining operations and shedding unproductive personnel. However, people who had been working for Jack for years resented the newcomer and his heavy-handed ways. Soon, even Jack's support for Mike began to erode. A showdown occurred during a management meeting. Mike was announcing another restructuring plan when Gus, a longtime trusted employee, turned to Jack and said that he and most of the other managers saw Mike as a hatchet man who didn't understand the company's culture. Gus threatened to resign rather than continue working for Mike, who looked to Jack for support. It wasn't there. Later that day, the exchange escalated to a heated battle. Mike felt that he acted in good faith as Jack's front man, but that Jack had abandoned him. Jack thought Mike meant to challenge even him. How did the conversations in this workplace go wrong? Such difficult office conversations can cause lasting damage to people's relationships and reputations. These types of discussions happen in six main areas. 1. I have bad news for you, you have to deliver unwelcome information. 2. You're challenging my power, how do you raise a tough issue to a superior? 3. I can't go there, most people avoid hard conversations, even necessary ones. 4. You win I lose, the conversation becomes a battle with a winner and a loser. 5. What's going on here? Apparently without warning, a conversation turns toxic. 6. I'm being attacked. Suddenly, you're being blasted by a verbal onslaught. You can develop specific strategies for navigating difficult conversations. Start by stepping back and taking a satellite view of the conversation to assess actual or potential obstacles. Think how your counterpart is likely to act and how you can move toward the outcome you want. Difficult conversations share three basic characteristics. First is the combat mentality, impelling participants to engage as if there will be a winner and a loser. Second, such confrontations carry emotional loads. Your own negative emotions, if foremost are fear, anger, and embarrassment, can overwhelm you or undermine your judgment. Third, tough conversations are hard to read, leading counterparts to misinterpret each other and react accordingly. What doesn't work? In a difficult conversation, your first instinct might be to assign blame, but deciding who is at fault won't help you get through it. In most cases, people believe that the other person is wrong anyway. Your opponents might use thwarting ploys, tactics designed to make you pull back, giving them an advantage. Most such ploys are ambiguous, like an insult disguised as a joke. People involved in tough conversations often make one or more of these mistakes. Avoidance e most people want to dodge unpleasantness at any cost. However, the cost is high. When they duck tough conversations, the situation often escalates. Emotional overload, individuals let tough emotions take over without a strategy. For overcoming them. Black or white, people often think they can handle conversations in two ways. Attack or retreat. They fail to find middle ground. One hit wonder, is some face every difficult conversation in the same way, even. When it doesn't work. Refusal to change, e others refuse to learn the skills necessary to improve their conversations because they believe such tactics are manipulative or dishonest. What does work? You don't need complicated strategies to handle thorny exchanges. In fact, a simple system based on three-way respect works best. First, self-respect, not self-righteousness, grounds you when you're flooded with emotions and allows you to act in your own interest while moving the conversation forward. Second, when you respect your counterparts, you acknowledge that they have interests which they consider to be valid, without necessarily agreeing with them. Third, respect for the obstacles in the conversational landscape itself helps you navigate around them, instead of seeing every problem as your counterpart's fault or bad intention. Think of the conversation as an urban obstacle course, like the landscapes that park our athlete David Bell traverses, leaping from balconies to rooftops, and take a broad, Strategic view as you plan your next move in the back and forth of a challenging dialogue. 
You may not be able to squelch your emotions or control your counterpart, but you can control your strategy and tactics. When an exchange begins to turn messy, act unilaterally to redirect it. Ask yourself parker-type questions, such as, how can I navigate this conversation to reach my desired outcome, or, how do I overcome these obstacles? You can't help feeling angry, nervous or frustrated, but work through that by thinking strategically about where you are vulnerable. Such self-assessment enables you to recognize your weaknesses and look past your emotions toward solutions. Combat Mentality Jane was distressed to discover that an absent colleague had ordered the wrong materials for a major customer, Gary. She had only a few hours to try to intercept the goods. She worked late into the evening doing the best she could to correct the situation without disturbing her boss, Deirdre, at home. However, the next morning, Gary contacted Deirdre and complained. Deirdre, embarrassed and angry, lit into Jane before she could say a word. When Jane tried to explain, Deirdre grew livid, shouting, Stop it! Stop making excuses! If you're going to take chances with my professional reputation, you need to do better than that. I won't forget this. In this toxic conversation, Deirdre was firing at Jane with all her guns. When combat mentality kicks in, the battle is about power, not about resolving the problem. In terms of hierarchy, Jane is one down from Deirdre. With the balance of power against her, she could either avoid combat, try to make herself a limited target or push back. Deirdre also felt threatened. She let her anger and embarrassment rule her emotions regardless of the harm they caused. Verbal warfare tends to concentrate on such power plays, and on zero, some thinking and winner-take-all fights for control, rather than on the desired outcome. You can use strategy and skill to break out of the combat mode. Planning for difficult conversations ahead of time is easier than trying to react appropriately in the heat of the moment. When devising your strategy, conceptualize a preferred outcome and a preferred working relationship. Identify the obstacles or interference ahead. Emotional loads. Confrontational conversations stir up several upsetting emotions, fear inhibits communication. Anger appears as unwarranted aggression and embarrassment throws yet another wrench in the works. These three unfurl in different combinations as individual. Signature emotional states. Your signature state reflects your emotional history. People tend to replay this history when they feel attacked and vulnerable. Interestingly, an opponent's thwarting ploy will often speak right to your most vulnerable spot, making you likely to overreact, and keeping you off balance. Most people's instinctual response to a flood of emotions is to control them tightly or to give in to them completely. These two extreme responses are not helpful during tough discussions. Instead, replace them with these tactics. Find the middle ground between emotional extremes, polar opposite responses to counterparts' thwarting ploys, such as offensive, hyper-nice, or shout the silence, are not your only choices. A whole range of responses exists, stretching from aggressive tactics, example, accusations or threats, to more passive ones, example, playing along or doing nothing. You could attempt to refocus the discussion on the problem at hand or try to impose your will on your counterpart. However, the most effective response is to talk to the ploy. Choose a neutral response that focuses on the remark, not the emotional content. Use temperate phrasing to speak clearly, simply and concisely. For instance, if someone tells you a racist joke, you can laugh along, ignore it or threaten to take action. To talk to the ploy, say, a joke like that doesn't work for me. Immunize against thwarting ploys, common thwarting ploys include lying, crying, ignoring, bullying, shouting, blocking and acting insulted. When faced with such a tactic, you can react or try to make your counterpart cease using it. Instead, immunize yourself. By understanding your vulnerabilities, you can build a defense against thwarting ploys before the conversation exploded. That is, if you know you react poorly to shouting, think how to disarm the ploy's effect on you. Change tack, when a conversation takes a dangerous turn, choose a different strategy and set of tactics. Recover from mistakes, no matter how skilled you become at handling difficult conversations, you will make mistakes. Most people resist saying that they've erred, 
because they feel it will undermine their authority and won't help move the discussion forward. Plan recovery strategies that let you regain your balance without endangering your reputation or harming your relationships. The breakdown gap. When two high schools merged, Gill, a seasoned administrator, was actually glad to move aside to give the social studies department chairmanship to young, energetic Delia. He looked forward to concentrating his energies in the classroom. During department meetings, Gill still liked adding his views in policy debates. After one such debate, Delia took him aside and asked him to stop bullying Mary, another teacher. Gill was baffled at the accusation, responding, I like Mary. Thinking that Delia might feel threatened by having a former department chair in her meetings, Gill tried to defuse the situation by giving her background information on the teachers from his school. Delia disregarded his help and said, We'll be raising the bar for everyone. I'll be observing your classes. I hope you can stretch yourself. This time, Gill was shocked. Conversations often disintegrate when the recipient hears something different than the message the speaker means to share. This breakdown is the difference between perception and intention. Both sides form misconceptions. They hear the other person's words, but they misinterpret the meaning behind them. Delia reacts to the bossy intention she thinks Gil has, not to his words or helpful actions. She believes his words are a ploy to obfuscate his true intent. The fact that people do use words to cover their feelings and intentions complicates the matter. The don't ask, don't tell approach to problem solving blocks good communication. People are reluctant to ask for clarification when a discussion begins to deteriorate because they don't want to stray off topic or talk about anything emotional. Asking someone's meaning is the better choice because the most damaging part of guessing and misinterpreting people's intentions is that you then judge their motives falsely, prolonging the downward spiral. The three strategies you can use to fix a breakdown are 1. Mock interviews, pretend to interview the other person as if he or she were present. Ask yourself two questions, what's the problem, and how would my counterpart describe the problem? Analyzing the topic from two viewpoints clarifies the situation. By focusing on the issue, you lessen the discussion's emotional content. 2. Plan B, use the, put myself in your shoes, approach. By looking at the conversation from your counterpart's point of view, you gain a valuable new perspective. You might not agree with his or her position, but you can understand and, perhaps, respect it. 3. Innocent offensiveness, to handle thwarting ploys with dexterity, react as though your counterpart is being, innocently offensive. Accept this unilaterally. It works because sometimes your counterpart is not aware that his or her behavior is unpleasant. Assuming the other person's innocence also keeps the situation from escalating. This neutral approach works even if your counterpart is being intentionally insulting.